Okay, welcome back from your break. This is Dr. Matthew J. Traum. This is the fourth video in the fourth lecture of the engineering design course. Uh, we've got half a slide here uh, and one more after this to go, so this will be the final video. Uh, we are talking about um, a creative ideation technique known as enlarging the search space. Uh, we talked about transformation and random input. Uh, and we're on number three, which is the why, why, why technique. Uh, why, why, why refers to um, a series of questions. So um, the way that, that you uh, do this approach um, is you essentially ask uh, why something is the way that it is or why something can't be done in the context of the solution to your engineering design problem. Um, and you don't attempt to answer the question, uh, but you, you ask the question and then the group thinks about uh, possible answers to the question, jots down notes, um, and then a related question in a related area is asked um, again, uh, another why question, and you essentially drill down into the problem by asking this whole series of questions uh, essentially about why things are the way they are, and that of course is to just um, induce a, a different sort of thought process um, in um, trying to understand why the world um, has solved particular problems the way it has or why things function the way that they do. Um, so, so that's um, the why, why, why approach to enlarging the search space. Um, the last technique um, within this ideation creativity subcategory is uh, counter planning. Um, and the way that you uh, counter plan is you essentially take uh, what you feel is a, is a good solution uh, to a design problem and you juxtapose that solution against its exact opposite. So something that's um, totally completely 180 degrees different um, from that particular design solution um, and see if somehow that complete opposite can uh, perhaps in a better way or a different way, solve your particular uh, design problem. Um, typically, it, it, it can't, but you um, pose it anyway. Um, and then the real power of this counterplanning approach is to look at how um, compromises between the two uh, diametrically opposed possible solutions um, or the synthesis of those two solutions um, can somehow solve the problem. So again, this is just a way of sparking creativity um, and causing the, the designers in the group to um, you know, maybe think in a way that they haven't thought before um, about that particular uh, solution space. Uh, okay, so moving on to the last slide. Um, this one is called the epiphany. Um, and I quote uh, Louis Pasteur here, um, who was the inventor of pasteurization, so a very important um, <coughs> modern food preservation technique, um, and he is, is attributed with the following quotes. Uh, Pastor said, fortune favors the prepared mind. Uh, and essentially what that means, uh, at least to me, in the context of engineering design, um, is uh, we, we have you do uh, literature searches and modeling and analysis and a lot of thinking uh, about how you might go about solving these particular design processes or these particular design problems. And um, the underlying reason for that, at least in the context of um, the epiphany as a way to get to a solution, um, is those activities really prepare your mind um, to have this, this uh, spark, this light bulb go off where you see a solution uh, that's, a, that's a brilliant solution that's totally different than anything you've seen before uh, and might lead you ultimately to the best um, possible outcome for solving that particular design problem. So um, an epiphany is, is exactly what it sounds like. It occurs um, really when it's not expected or anticipated. You can't really um, set up a situation to force an epiphany to occur. Um, the best that you can do is, uh, as Pastor said, um, to prepare yourself. So epiphanies usually occur um, after periods of intense preparation uh, when all of a sudden you are taking a break or thinking about something else, um, and then all of a sudden your mind will hit upon this this amazing solution that you hadn't thought of before, uh, and this speaks to you know the real need 
um, even in the engineering design process, engineers work quite hard uh, but to take breaks every now and again and let your mind rest uh, because it's usually in those restful periods that um, you do have epiphanies that, that often tend to be better than any of the other solutions that you've come up with through any of the other formal processes. Um, in my own case, remember before, um, I used genetics um, to think of dismounted infantry soldiers as camels um, as I was going about my, my own design process for my doctoral dissertation. Um, and I'd done a, an awful lot of reading and thinking about um, how camels survive in hot environments and how they manage uh, water and heat. Um, and it turns out that, that my, uh, at least one of my co-advisors for my doctoral dissertation was uh, <coughs> a professor of material science. And so um, I would meet on a regular basis with his research group, which was a bunch of material scientists. I, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, so these people were um, in, a, in a different area and doing research that was very different than the work that I was doing. Um, and I was listening to a, a presentation by one of my colleagues, and she was introducing um, this material, which is called Microtrust, and it's produced by um, interference photolithography. Um, essentially, each one of these little holes arises from uh, an interference pattern created by multiple lasers shown on um, a um, light activated photoresist, and, and this is the end result uh, of that process. Um, and as I was sitting there looking at this picture, uh, this again had almost nothing to do with um, the particular problem that I was trying to solve, uh, because remember I was looking at uh, ballistic protection and thermal management for dismounted infantry soldiers. Um, it occurred to me as I looked at this picture that this material um, could because it was solid, um, stop bullets, so it had ballistic properties. But then each one of these little holes also represented a, a pathway for water vapor to transport from the inside surface of the soldier's skin out through the body armor to the ambient environment. And that transport of water vapor could carry the latent heat of vaporization with it, um, essentially allowing the soldier to sweat through his body armor. Um, and it turns out that that solution, that geometry is exactly the way that camel fur operates. So camel fur uh, will actually uh, mat, uh, or, or in fact it will not mat to the skin, it's, it's hydrophobic, uh, and so it will actually force the sweat to evaporate right off the skin uh, and evaporate and transport through uh, essentially um, micro or nanopores created by, by the fur. Um, and so this was my epiphany. Uh, when I realized that this microtrust stuff that, that I was looking at essentially in the, the context of a, of a break, some other uh, doctoral student's research, um, would actually behave the exact same way as camel fur would if it were turned into body armor. And so that actually became the foundation for uh, my doctoral research and, and my dissertation. Um, so, so that's an example, at least in, in my um, history, of how uh, I had an epiphany and ultimately it led to me getting a PhD. So I think that's a pretty cool story. Um, anyway, so that uh, takes us to the last slide. Um, so this is the conclusion of this presentation. Uh, again, this has been lecture four of the engineering design course. Uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, we'll see you when uh, it's time to do lecture five. Thanks. Bye.